Welcome back to Forest Education, this is Zad. Today we're going to be talking about Vion v Unlimited. They are a telecommunication company based off in the Netherlands and they identify themselves as a leading global provider of connectivity and internet services. Now we're going to go through a little bit of their earnings, a little bit of their company itself. So first off, you're able to see here on their fourth quarter 2021 earning releases, Total revenue has increased year over year for around 6.8% uh, with currency adjustment 10.1%. So you're seeing around 7.788 million US million dollars compared to 7.291. So not much of a big difference. Their EBI TDA has improved a little, a 5.7%, and their net income is for the first time income around 801 uh, million compared to 315 million in loss. So they hit a profit, which is amazing. And you get to see here their EBI TDA, 8.9% uh, net income instead of a net loss. And their equity free cash flow after licenses is up 41.9% to around $334 million. This company trades at a market cap of around $1.38 billion. And their total cash currently is around $2.3 billion. Uh, with additional undrawn credit com or com committed credit lines of around $1.5 billion. It's currently trading at $1.38 billion. So you get to see here between 2.3 and 1.8, just the cash value alone can trade higher on that. Now, they do have more information relating towards everything I guess you would need to know about their operations about key recent developments for instance they successfully concluded the russia tower transaction and so they announced a successful conclusion of the sale of russia tower assets to uh service telecom for 70.75 or 70.65 rubles and the conclusion of this transaction paves the way of establishments of a long-term term partnership pursuant to a master tower agreement that has entered between pjsc vime vam pilcon and service telecom so it definitely starts to like take a look that some of the news relating towards the recent russia invasion has come into part to play with the stock's price so moving on from there as well i mean it's it's sold as russia tower anyway and then moving on from there you're able to see back on december 2021 they also concluded a 90 billion dollars rubles billion bank uh, financing so this is again maybe it has to do with the relations of their work with russia and andrew piankton appointed as a ceo for belin uh, kyrgyzstan and then you're able to see as well another person here to join as a CEO for Vion Ventures. So here you're able to see 29th of December. So that's another news compared to the 18th of December. So uh, that's a successor as well. And other basically management movements as you're able to see. Now, another one that I do want to kind of cover is their sanctions. And they did mention about it on 4th of March, but before then they did report earnings as we just saw in a second ago. And here you're able to see Beeline Russia closed 2021 strongly. So that is part of the transactions uh, or part of their operations as they have Russian involved uh, divisions in their company. So Vian also responded to investor inquiries. So right on here, they're mentioned as a leading global provider of connectivity and internet services. After recent developments has concluded that Vian is not subject to European Union sanctions as a result of sanctions imposed by EU or Mr. Mikhail Fridman and Mr. Peter Avian on 28th of February 2022 by EU. As is closed in our 20F filing on 15th of March 2021, Vian has no ultimate controlling shareholder. As is closed in a public Public fillings um, that this company letter one holds 47.85% of common voting shares. Messrs. Fritman Avon hold an aggregate of less than 50% interest in letter one group and the ultimate shareholding entity for letter one and both have stepped down from letter one group board and all of Vion's shareholder have identical voting rights, none have special voting rights. So as per public filing, there are no government in place between letter one and any other shareholder relating to the voting of Vion shares and neither Mr. Fridman nor Mr. Avon directly or indirectly owns a voting interest in Vion shares or ADSs outside of their interest letter one. So even though that is the case, there is another um, basic kind of aspect to it is how much is a ruble and their financing actually gone. And if you're able to see the, the actual currency itself and from a month, month perspective, they have dropped significantly from a one year, you're going around 14 cents, around 
quarter of their entire value has been wiped off for the Russian ruble. And so the question comes here is, is this a part of it? Now, again, we're doing on the weekend, it jumped a little bit around 29% or 30%, and we most likely will expect for it to drop. But that is yet to be seen. I mean, the weekend kind of plays a little bit different for these uh, uh, currencies, but we're yet to see what happens here. And that could be a big aspect of why the stock is trading lower and massively slumped down because of the Russian uh, op operations in terms of telecommunication. And another part is sales could really dip if people can't even afford it in a part of war with the Russian operations um, in terms of being able to afford their internet services and telecommunication. Now, due to that, you're able to see still some valuations that are really looking great, like price over sales being 0.14, SP500 is around 5, price over book is 1.85, again, SP500 is around 4 to 5, profitability looks really good at 75.71, operating margin 18%, EBI TDA margin 53%, and return on assets being very effective. Return on assets 2.89, so not as effective, but return on equity is 166%, massive. Institutional buyers you're able to see a few of just a handful actually three which have activities in 2020 too but nothing really to talk about short interest availability there's around 10 million shares available for short selling at around an average of 10.16 percent ratio and around half of all shares being traded goes to the short volume on any given day. But before moving on towards technical analysis, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave vacation buttons on for the channel. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed this video and you can join our Discord in the description below. Now, in terms of technical analysis, what we get to see here is that, of course, moving averages are not looking good. 200 SMA above 50 SMA and 30 MA is above 10 SMA. But that's not the point. The average directional index is showing that this is bound to kind of reverse from this very strong negative rever uh, trend. Uh, we probably are seeing the first signs of reversal as you get to see in the last three candles were kind of stabilization into what the new bottom is. The willing percent R is still oversold, suggesting there's still more selling action than buying action and so that's still good even we even though we've seen a bit of a push in stock price from around 0.24 up to 40 cents um, the willing percent r by the way is very similar to the rsi the macd histogram is kind of recovering now suggesting a positive reversal sometime this coming week which is a good thing momentum is negative around negative 1.14 so there's still room to go up there stochastic fast and stochastic slow are currently it's looking to be somewhere around the bottom, suggesting this might actually be a good time to buy. So that would be a very interesting thing to see. Uh, previous bottoms were, for instance, the 21st of July here, where it dipped first and then jumped higher. Another one was on the 16th of August, where it was around here and then jumped up. Another one was around 30th of October, around here. But this doesn't always play that way because it was downwards for the longest time in a downtrend. But this is more of a shock drop, so you can expect at least a bit of a rise. Even if it's going to drop later, there would be a bit of a rise. Now, Bollinger Bands are still going downwards, even though it has record volume. So there is something interesting there. There is an influx, and I'm guessing uh, the news about their, the European sanctions not affecting them is the part to play here. My concern is about revenue coming from Russian operations and the financing that is mainly in rubles, which now dropped around 25%, at least to 50%. Now, Fibonacci retracements show significant resistances at 75 cents, 106, 131, 156, 192, and 238, with a support at 24 cents. There's a lot of resistances here and a bit of supports, so currently some supports are 39 cents and 30 cents and 24 cents. Resistances are around 59, 80 cents, 101, 120, and then 132, 140, and then 150, and then 165, going to 172, higher to 181 and 190. Now, analyst recommendations, I don't have anything that is not older than six months. Um, all the ones around six months are going between 220 and 270. But taking a look here, what do I think about this one? Well, I think we're going to see a bit of a bounce back. Now, my concern is still with the Russian operations for their, also their financing for the rubles, uh, additionally as well as revenue coming in from Russian operations. But this company seems to be still not really affected by that uh, sanctions as of yet. Maybe not directly affected, but it could indirectly be affected. And that is a bit of the concern. And as we go forward, we'll understand a bit more. So it's a bit of a gamble at this moment. But 
but I do expect for it to be highly volatile and see massive price action both ways. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day.